Scott's Geography Notebook. Did you want to try saying it? Da, da, da. In a previous video, we talked about the global circulation model. Okay. Now I want to talk about how this guy is going to be causing different winds in different places. For a quick review, we know that it gets hot at the equator and that it's cold at the poles. Warm air is less dense and so it wants to rise. Cold air is more dense so it wants to sink. That's going to be causing a high pressure and a low pressure. Now because of the dynamics of the spinning globe and everything, we're going to have some other funkiness going on. We have a high pressure system at about 25 to 30, 35 degrees north and south. This is going to be the descending arm of the Hadley cell, another Hadley cell there. Uh, and that's going to be causing it to be dry here in our mid latitudes. We call this our subtropical high pressure system. Going through quickly, there's another video that goes through slowly. Then the air goes towards the poles. It runs into this cold, dry, dense air. This is more humid and that air begins to rise and that's causing that low pressure system. Let's take a look now at what this looks like if we were to take these high pressure systems and low pressure systems. And instead of just looking at the side view of the earth, let's see what it does over the surface of the earth. So I'm going to copy some of these guys over. I'm going to have low pressure systems along my equatorial area. A low, 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 low. I have got my ITCZ, Intertropic Convergence Zone, kind of following right along that particular line. To the north and to the south, I have high pressure systems. So I'm going to be putting a high, 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 hello, wait. No, just a high. Another one over here. Hi, 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 hi. Perfect. And then what else do I have? I know that at the poles, I've got a high pressure system. So we're going to be putting those guys in. All right. Hi. Good. And then in my um, upper mid latitudes, I have my low pressure systems there and i have the air rising and running in right along here low 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 okay now what we want to do is we want to go back a few steps go back and try to remember what happens with a high pressure system and with a low pressure system so i made my little model here now we've got pressure gradient force and that's causing the air to push away we have coriolis force and that's causing it at least in the northern hemisphere to be, to be deflected off towards the right all right now look what happens here with my little transparency if i flip it over i still have a high pressure system in the southern hemisphere now coriolis is acting the other direction and it's going to be pulling towards the left as it goes away we have friction and that causes it to kind of go out diagonally this is really helpful for me having a little flippity flip flip so that as i'm going through and understanding these i can see them all right so when we're thinking about the movement of air from one spot to the other. We want to start to draw some of these lines in. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the air coming out of my high pressure system, out of the high, out of the high, out of the high. And it's actually coming into the low. And it's the same thing, right? It's going to be in the Northern hemisphere. It's coming into that low. And just like it is here, it's going to be starting to come in and rotate around as it comes in to that. Okay. All of these little blobs that I'm trying to draw on the end are actually going to be little arrowheads. So, um, out of the high into the low, out of the high, and I could have another high there because it's coming into this low, coming into the low pressure system. Okay. These guys are coming out of the high and they are going to going, be going into that low pressure system as well. So that kind of helps me out in my northern hemisphere. Oh no, northern hemisphere. What's happening to the winds with a high? It's coming out um, in a clockwise rotation, coming out in a clockwise rotation. Okay. Now for me, very confused. I like to have my Southern Hemisphere drawn out here as well. See, Coriolis force is backwards. Uh, it has the opposite effect on the movement of air in the Southern Hemisphere. So for here, I need to draw my high pressure system coming out that way and going that way. 
coming out of the high and yes, going into the low. You can see why we call this line right here the Intertropic Convergence Zone, the ITC. Z or Zeta, as one of my beautiful videos um, talked about, because that's where the air from the north and the air from the south are coming together. Out of the high into the low, out of the high into the low. Okay, then we've got it coming out of the high again, out of the high, and out of the high. Okay, that's going to be what's happening, and you maybe wanted to use a smaller pen for that. But that's going to be what's happening with those winds. So let's try to identify a little bit better what is the direction of those winds. In most cases, we name our winds after their source direction. And in this region, it's coming from the north, and it's going to be coming from the east. So these winds overall are going to be traveling like that, and we call these the northeast trade winds. Good, good, good. Okay, well, let's take a look at these guys. They're coming from the east as well, but now they're coming from the southeast. And these guys, sure enough, are called the southeast trade winds. Love it. Okay. Further north, above this high pressure system, between 30 and 60 degrees north on uh, most cases, right, our air is going to be traveling, yeah, kind of from the southwest. So, you know, you could think about it that way. Really, these winds um, are most noted for traveling exactly from the west to the east. Okay. So we call these lines right in here, the winds that we find right in here, the prevailing westerlies. Our prevailing westerlies going through there. And as we come down to here, again, these winds primarily moving from the west to the east. So if we call winds coming from the west, Westerlies, these are also going to be, you might signify the northern versus the southern, but these are also the prevailing westerlies. Okay, now these winds are going to be moving our surface ocean currents. Um, but what I think is kind of cool to think about as well is um, this little region right in here. Okay? Before there was powered ships, there was wind. Okay. And so if you're going from Europe, a lot of um, discovery and exploration and exploitation of the Americas was done out of Europe. Okay. So Spain and England and all these different groups. What did they do? Well, they came down um, a little bit further south and they caught those northeast trade winds. Those northeast trade winds would bring them across. And a lot of times they would end up here in the Bahamas. Okay. Um, the West Indies, so-called, because that's where Columbus first thought that he had discovered India. Okay. Um, so the West Indies, right in here, the Bahamas, everything else like that. How do you get back home? Okay. Well, what you need to do is you need to go a little bit further south. And there is a um, current, an ocean current, that's going to be pulling you north. Right? It's the Gulf Coast Current, or the Gulf Stream is what they call it. And if you come up for far enough north, you can catch those prevailing westerlies going back home. And so there's this cycle that the northern Atlantic for those European explorers would come down. They would catch the northeast trade winds. Those northeast trade winds would blow them over here. The Gulf Stream would then bring their ships back far enough north that they could catch those prevailing westerlies and come all the way back. Okay. This region right down in here, especially treacherous. Okay. What is happening down here is we have prevailing westerlies. So all of the wind is blowing here. And this little region between South America and Antarctica, we call that guy, um, that's a strait. And we call that little region right in there after a um, English explorer. His name was Francis Drake. So we call this Drake's Passage. 
Okay. Drake actually stole some gold from the Spaniards here. He came to, instead of getting caught going back this way, he actually came down this way, went through here. If you go out to Point Reyes, there's a beach that's named after Drake. The idea is, is that he uh, repaired his ship there and then traveled all the way back to England and took a lot of gold to his queen. And she was so happy that she knighted him. And so he went by Sir Francis Drake. So these prevailing westerlies, they are going to be driving a lot of our ocean currents. Um, they were um, the driving force for a lot of history, especially our maritime history, um, and a lot of great stories that come out out of those.